Hi there, in this video, we will see how we can download Sentinel data using Python from Copernicus. This is an easy and free way to download raw Sentinel data, let it be Sentinel 2 or Sentinel 1, for free of cost using Python as a scripting language. To do that, first of all, we will have to create our own Copernicus account. You can head over to datapace.copernicus.eu and look for the registration link. Here, you can either log in if you already have an account or you can just simply click on register to create a new account. Creating new account is a simple step where you just have to fill out bunch of details such as your full name, the email id. I will go with a fresh email id and password. The country, type of user, for example, I can put such as uh, business and commercial, theme of activity would be land and purpose of use would be business. I will just click on accept for the terms and conditions and I will register. You will receive an email like this where you can click on verify email address and it will take you to the verification page. Once your verification is successful, you can again go back to datapace.copernicus.eu and log in with your account. Now you can click on my account and under application, we have to be sure that we have CDSC public application available. Now it's time for us to open terminal and start writing Python code. I'll open terminal and create a new folder on my desktop with the name get sentinel. I'll get inside this folder and open it in my VS code. Now I'll start with first of all creating a virtual environment. I'll activate the account and I'll start installing all the required packages. You can also have a look at the required packages by scrolling down and taking a look at this gist where these four packages are required. So I will simply copy these packages one by one. And once this is installed, now it's time for us to start writing Python code. I will create a new Python file with the name download.py and I will first of all start with importing all the required packages. Then we will start by setting up the variables. The first variable would be the name or the email id of Copernicus user. You can definitely use environment file and which is in fact something that I will recommend you to do it. But for the sake of video, I will directly write it over here. And then I will write the password. And then I will recommend to get the area of interest in a WKT format. To do that, you can simply go to something like geojson.io and draw the shape that you want. For example, in my case, I have already added this shape on my map and I can just simply save it as WKT. I will copy this WKT and paste it over here. Finally, the data collection would be Sentinel-2. The next thing we want is the date range in which we want to search for the satellite data. I will take today's date and for yesterday, I will take today minus one. This will totally depend upon you. If you want more data, you can definitely go for 10 or even 100 or if you want for a year long data, you can also search for 365. For now, I will keep it as days is equal to one. The next thing that we want to do is to create a function to get the access token from key cloak. Now this is a modern feature that has been added by Copernicus which allows us to get the authentication token based on the username and password. Once this is done, finally we will copy the code and then I will explain you the code in depth. Alright, now what all things are we doing here? So the first thing is the request that we have to send with the data collection that is sentinel2 with yesterday string and today string and the WKT of our geometry. This will allow us 
to filter all the data available for the given AOI between the given date range and for the given satellite product. This will create a dictionary which then we will convert into pandas data frame. Once that is done, then we will use the geo footprint inside that pandas data frame and apply shape from shapely to actually convert it from raw to a geometry format. Once that is done, then we will use this geometry to create geo pandas from the pandas data frame. Finally, if you just want to get L2A dataset, you can remove L1C from the product DF data framework. If you don't want to do that, you can simply skip this step. And if you want to get L1C data, then you can simply remove L2A and get L1C data. Once that is done, we will just take a print of how many tiles we have and then we will introduce identifier as a unique key based on the name available in the product df. Once that is done, if we get all features length as 0, that means there are no tiles for the given date, we will simply skip it. But if we get the dates, then we will simply write a for loop in which we will use the key cloak that we have created earlier with the username and password. And then we will send request to catalog.dataspace.copernicus.eu along with the feature ID, which will in return give us back the zip file. Here you can mention the path where you want to save it. For example, for me, I want to save it on the same directory level where this download.py file is. And then it will simply print it. I have tried to kept everything in the try except to catch the errors and spit out problem with server. And of course, if we don't get anything in this pandas data frame, there is no point in going through this loop. And that is why I have also kept it in if else loop with the title no data found. All right, now let's try to execute this script. Now what we are trying to do over here is we are trying to see how much data we got. And for now, we got no data found. Now, if we try to change yesterday to something like, let's say, 10 days and execute the script one more time, you will see that we found three L2A tiles and it has started downloading these tiles. Now, depending upon your internet speed, this might take from few minutes to sometime up to 60 minutes to download the data. But once you have downloaded the data, you will have your data in a dot .safe format. Now, if you want to see how you can unzip this data and create meaningful indices such as NDVI or EVI, you can write that down in the comments and I will make sure to create another video. Again, I would highly recommend you to check out this blog where you can find all of this code and try to execute on your own and let us know in the comments if you face any issues. Thank you.